the most popular uh, temple, the most popular place of pilgrimage in the ancient Greek world was the Oracle of Apollo at Delphi in the north of Greece. Um, it was sort of the uh, Santiago de Compostela or Varanasi or even Mecca of the ancient Greek world. People went there to commune directly with the god Apollo or they would go there just uh, to show proper obeisance and uh, respect for Apollo, and generally Apollo being the god of wisdom, to become wiser by uh, their association with the god and his great shrine at Delphi. Uh, the shrine at Delphi was known for uh, two great bits of advice offered by the god, by Apollo. The first one is Gnothi se oton, which translates to know thyself. Uh, the second one is Meden Agan, which translates to nothing in excess. Uh, probably, in my opinion, the two wisest bits of advice ever placed in the mouth of an invented god. Um, it's just a basic common sense, um, and of course you put it in the mouth of a god and uh, suddenly it takes on uh, an aura of uh, eternal truth and uh, numinescence, I suppose, that uh, adds that little bit of extra oomph to what is ultimately just common sense. Know thyself is the most interesting one, at least from the point of view of antinatalism, because it says, um, know what you are, and most importantly, know what you are not. And you are most certainly not a god. Now, one of the interesting things that I find about the antinatalist argument is it puts human beings, whether they want to be or not, in, this, in the position of being gods. Um, whether or not we want to be in that situation, we're cast in the role of godlike beings in total and complete control over potentials, our potential progeny, the ones that haven't actually appeared yet even though we are not gods. Now, that's rather bizarre, but that's what happens. That's, that's the way the argument is framed. But the ironical thing is, even though we are not gods and we are expected in that dynamic to act as though we are gods, i.e., um, show a godlike responsibility for whatever happens to a potential being, um, our relationship with um, the potentials takes on something of a godlike quality, but this time we're not gods. Um, what uh, we owe them their right to non-existence. What do they owe us? Do they owe us anything? If we're to accept them as entities, then presumably they have certain characteristics. If we owe them something, then it, it, there is a, a moral relationship between the two entities. Um, either morals are going to be reciprocal or they ain't morals. Um, <clears throat> so if we've already established that I owe them or we owe them something, i.e. their right to remain non-existent, to remain potential and not real, presumably they owe us something in return. Or at least we have rights as well. Maybe uh, they actually ought, have, owe us simply the obligation of respecting our rights as we have the obligation to respect theirs. That's kind of modern rights theory. What do they owe us? What rights do we have vis-a-vis -vis the potentials? It's an interesting thought when you consider the fact that we're not gods, they're not gods, and yet each one is expected to treat the other one as a god. We owe them their um, nothingness, do they owe us respect for our existence? How much um, of our existence is based upon procreation? Well, hmm, how much of our existence is based upon reproduction? All you have to do is look at, say, the female body, and you'll see what a massive percentage of our basic biology is built towards nothing but reproduction. So we have to forego that aspect of ourselves. We have to overcome our essential nature. We have to overcome our uh, desire, our need to procreate, etc. Now that's fine, but 
if that's what is expected of us from these potentials, we are being asked to overcome what we are. Should I then say that it's reasonable for me to expect these potentials to overcome what they are? i.e. they are beings that are living in some sort of paradise, I suppose, a, a paradise of a vacuum, a uh, paradise in a vacuum. Am I within my rights to expect them to overcome their fundamental nature and step out into the phenomenal world with all its problems? After all, I have to live in this phenomenal world. Um, and um, I'm the one that's being asked to forgo what I am in order to stop this vicious cycle of desire and, uh, and addiction and, um, and uh, attrition and this sort of thing. I don't, it all seems to be fully on our shoulders and there's no concomitant um, need for them, these potentials, to respect our rights and our right to be exactly what we are. I'm expected to abandon what I am, or at least a large chunk of what I am. Do you think that it's legitimate for me to expect the same thing of the potentials? Thank you.